the, the agenda. I have an item to add to the agenda that I just found out this afternoon, and it will go under for decision, item 7H, and it's the Resto de Ville Francophone in Quebec. What, what is it again? Resto de, de Ville in Quebec. Um, anybody else have anything to add? Oh, I just got an item for in camera, but uh, I see there's already something. There's in something camera. in camera, so it's, it's a personnel. Thing. So we can we can discuss we can that after. Yeah. Um, if I may, uh, just a question for Deputy Clerk or, geez, I forget his new title, but um, <laughs> <laughs> item seven F is that uh, the policy bylaw update that I knew of you about? No. No. Under four A. Oh, yes. I did not see that. Got you. Thank you. I just want to make sure it was on the agenda. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Paul. And if nothing else, motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. Conflict of interest declaration. Anybody have a conflict on any of the items? Hearing none. We'll proceed to number three, which is a presentation, and the presentation is from Booktush Bay Industries, which is to do with oyster farming, and we have two gentlemen here, Raymond Ouellette and Steen Gunderson. You're on. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity to present to you this evening. We really do appreciate it. Um, what we'll do is we'll pr quickly move through what is oyster grow and oyster aqua farming um, and we'll also include some of the economic benefits of it and so on and so forth. Please feel free to ask any questions as we move through. I'd like this to be more, less formal and more of a discussion. Okay, so um, first off, um, basically like we were saying, it's a farming system that's basically it's very environmentally focused but it is also something that is designed and engineered to offer people a profitable business so that they can develop and grow um, to whatever scale uh, fits their needs. Um, our system's engineered to minimise the, the labour content and basically maximise uh, the yield of uh, high value saleable uh, oysters in the marketplace. Uh, si as you see in the slide, simple, efficient, profitable. Um, so basically, it is a very simple uh, process to follow. Um, we have a formula that we share with all the oyster farmers. And if they follow the formula as, as stated, um, we've had 100% success in the field um, across uh, many different farms. Um, efficient. Um, it is very efficient because you are handling multiple bags of oysters at one point in time and um, again no pesticides, it's a very in environmentally friendly system, no pesticides, no fertilizers required with this type of farming, uh, we're just harnessing the benefits of mother nature. It's a complete flexible system, um, we have a full range, not everyone has the same areas or area characteristics um, on their farms, so basically uh, uh, we have a range of products that can fill the individual needs of, uh, of the client and the would-be farmer. Um, we offer a six bag system and we have in the middle of the room just so you can see a more tactile demonstration of it, that is our Oyster Grow Pro which carries six bags and each one of those bags on Grow Out will have around about 220 to 250 uh, three inch oysters in them. Uh, we offer a four bag pro compact system, uh, which again, basically uh, more of the professional grade of product, uh, but more compact if people have less labor available to them. And then we have the low pro system, which is a system that's very much more focused on someone who wants to farm on their own. So they don't want to have lots of equipment and things like that. They want to farm their own oysters. And again, we've got many people that are using that and they've built viable businesses on that platform. So again, uh, a, a real range that uh, can support the, the individual's needs. Um, six bags, as you can see, various different sizes of bags depending on the growth of the oyster. So when you go from a small seed all the way through to a full grow out, 
Um, we want to contain the oysters in the bag. So the smaller mesh is for the smaller oysters growing into the larger mesh. And the larger mesh, obviously, more flow, more feed, <coughs> um, you know, but faster growth. Uh, they go into a cage, as you can see it's like a sliding drawer system, so the bags aren't actually out in the elements as such, the bags are a sleeve for the oyster, and um, essentially in there the cage is taking all the harsh environment. So there are other systems out there that just put the bags and attach ropes to the bags. Uh, the unfortunate side effect of that is if you have a storm, the ropes will pull on the bags and tear the bags and you can lose your crop. So you can have uh, a lot of failure in uh, that method. Does it, do you feed them? Is that what you do? You have to feed them? No. Nope. Or is it natural? It's food? natural. It's all basically the plankton, the flow of plankton through, uh, through the, uh, the fishery is what's feeding them. So you're not doing any feeding. Uh, there is no pesticides. There is no fertilizers. You're just harnessing Mother Nature. Uh, as you see at the bottom of there, there's two large floats. Those floats basically suspend the oysters at the top of the water column. The reason we stay at the top is that's where the wa water's the warmest, therefore there's the best feed. So that's where you get the fastest growth. Um, anchor lines, we have two different configurations that we offer with the anchor lines where they're tied um, to the anchors. Uh, basically, they're tied in row, a row format, and we can do either a lateral system to a main line, um, so each one's independently, or we can do like a chain link uh, assembly, and, and that's really designed for areas where people have concerns with whales or sea mammals and things like that, you know, so they're not going to get caught up in uh, any of the farms, so to speak. Uh, again, sizes, we, as I said, we have the Pro, we have the Pro Compact and the Low Pro and you know, some of the Pro is manageable with equipment or a team of two people. Uh, the Pro Compact, um, you can manage it solo but some people use two and the Low Pro you can do it completely independently on your own. In support of Oyster Grow we have a full range of uh, accessories. Um, so. Uh, Birds were a large issue. We had a lot of complaints about um, birds on farms. Uh, people had issues with that. We, we looked at various different solutions. Uh, we developed a product called the BirdAway um, system, which is a, it's a passive uh, kite system. So once you put it up there, basically it'll keep uh, seabirds off your farm for up to seven acres. Um, and actually we've, uh, we're getting published in Aquaculture North America on that. We're getting an editorial this month, so we're quite happy with that. But also in support of the practices where the guys are handling baskets for the side of boats, the boats themselves, all the equipment that you need to do the job as proficiently as possible. We also support the clients with that as well. So why use Oyster Grow? It maintains a steady submerged position underneath, so you're in that highest column of water. Um, basically gives you the best optimized feeding. Um, it is a stable system, it promotes continuous feeding and gives you the best growth. Um, also it withstands severe weather conditions too. Um, oysters, there is a problem in the uh, shellfish industry which is called secondary spat. And essentially what secondary spat is, is Oysters growing on oysters, barnacles, mussels, so ba baby uh, spat wanting to grow on other shellfish. And obviously for a market shellfish you're looking to have them so they're clean in the restaurant. So the design and the principle behind this design, and this, this is why this patented product works so well, is periodically you will flip the oysters out of the water. So now the float is suspending them above the water <coughs> and what we're doing is we're air drying. And depending on your environmental conditions, this might be up to 48 hours. It doesn't kill or affect the oysters, but it basically kills and removes the secondary spat, thus keeping your crop at the highest yield. Rather than you looking to sell to a meat market, you're looking to sell to the premium uh, restaurant raw bar market. Um, easy flip platform. Uh, like we said, we have the baskets that go on there that can make it easy for you to flip and easy to work the cages. Come the winter, obviously in these regions we have ice. So uh, as you see, the floats have two caps on them. 
those caps get undone, and then we basically will sink and we'll put the, the oyster cages on the, the, the sea floor. If there's a major storm coming through as well, we also use that technique to avoid the storms. So that's what we mentioned there. As you can see, it's on the bottom of the seabed with uh, resting on the two floats. So the ice can grow above it and then come the spring, basically you raise them to the top and they start feeding them again. During the winter, they basically go into like a, a stasis where they're dormant for a period of time. Also, while it's on the seafloor, you're also keeping yourself elevated from the seabed so they're not getting trapped in the mud. So if they do start to wake up and start feeding, you can get mortality there. This stops that. And it also prevents uh, crabs, starfish, things like that, getting at your crop, which are predators of oysters. When you're raising up, the funnel shape in the floats allows you easily to evacuate the water. So it's, uh, it's engineered in such a way that basically the water will flow out and you can raise the cages very quickly. When we're sinking or raising cages, we'll be doing around about a thousand units per day. So it's a relatively quick process. Um, you can also have uh, customized platforms or on the, on the boats where you can move the cages over. As you can see, this is, a, this is a pontoon boat, but we also have on a Carolina skiff, we have a platform that sits on there as well for the smaller outfits. Also, you can mount harvesters and so on and so forth, sorters and things like that. So you're doing a lot of the work on the water. You don't have to be bringing it in and trucking. You can basically sort your crops at your farm. And any oysters that aren't market size, you can put them back in rather than having the logistics cost. So our product consistently produces a higher quality oyster, uh, gets top dollar. Um, the desirable shape of an oyster is what they call 3 two, one three inches long, two inches wide, one inch deep, a deep cup is what the market's looking for, and our product consistently offers a yield of a deep cup oyster, um, and basically giving the, the farmer the highest value harvest. What you get from the, the oyster growth system, it basically gives us, we give you sites, assistance in site selection, um, we also help people with their business planning. Um, we have a formula. It's worked hundreds and hundreds of times from various different <coughs> sizes of farms. Um, we have, we're very proud of the fact that over the 13 years with this product, we have a 100% record. No one's gone out of business using our system. Everyone's successfully grown their business. So that model, basically, we encourage people to follow. Sometimes we can be a little bit like a nagging wife, unfortunately, to make sure, because we have a track record we want to defend. Um, advantages, labor savings, time savings, Reduce mortality, faster growth, improved yield, superior quality, and it is a proven business model. As a business system, it is successfully proven. We have hundreds of oyster farmers in various different climates um, across three continents. Uh, we're in Asia, we're in Europe, and we're across North America with people <coughs> successfully farming with our systems. Um, it is a predictable investment, and it gives you profitable results and high yields. It's a community system, so not only does your farmer uh, grow a business, but there's also people around the periphery who support. So as the list says, we've got buoy manufacturers, you've got bolt mill builders, fabrication shops, um, transportation, obviously, there's a crop to be moved around, packaging, um, there's an awful lot of packaging around the product to support the product going to market. Um, there's R&D, and there's an awful lot of other stuff as well, even down to your local coffee shop. Uh, farming with our system, basically, unlike other uh, methods of food, processing is completely natural. Uh, we like to call our product environmentally positive. Uh, there is no pesticides, there is no fertilizers. And uh, when we're talking about the positive side of things, uh, a full-grown oyster individually can uh, filter 30 gallons of water per day. So if you look at 100 cages of that size, you're looking at them filtering around about 4 million gallons per day, down to a 2 micron level. If you were to put an industrial plant in to do that type of filtration, you'd be spending many millions of dollars, and all you're actually doing is letting Mother Nature do, do the work for you. So our business model allows you to build a business that uh, delivers a healthy, high-protein food source um, for your community, and export and improve the local environment. 
it is a plus plus, it is a win-win for everyone associated with working with our system. Back by us, Baktouche Bay Industries, we've been in uh, the aquaculture and support industry for many, many years. Um, we developed, designed and engineered the product around about 14 years ago, it is patented. Um, we're proud of the fact that it is uh, from the Maritimes and we're proud of the fact that we are exporting this system all over the world now. We've just opened up our first farm in Iceland, which we're quite proud of. So. Um, we have hundreds of commercial operations and um, they're all successful to this point. So uh, we're, it's, we're very pleased with that. Um, we also have distributors who, who support the local communities as well. So, um, you know, there's always product close if uh, they need support, if there is, if there is any issues. Um, there is strong market demand for the product. Um, there's an awful lot of opportunities offshore into the Asian markets for anyone in the fisheries industries within our region. And um, basically, uh, we're reducing the costs of operating a business like this and helping uh, people grow and develop their local econ economy. So you've only got to come to a place like Baktouche or go to Prince Edward Island where you can see large farms and large organisations <coughs> and operations to see the evidence of that. Onto the, the video. So just very quickly, I know we're a little bit pressed for time. Um, this particular video uh, is available on our YouTube channel, but this shows a, an oyster farm that uh, a gentleman called Armand King uh, started up 13 years ago. He bought 50 cages. Uh, now you can see a farm that's organized. He now has 9,000 cages. He has 25 million oysters in the water at any one point in time. He's employing 40 people. And he, you know, in the local community that we are, you know, we have many businesses like this are growing. He is not our largest farm. Our largest farm is 11,000 cages with uh, just on 35 million oysters. So this is a business model that from small things develop huge opportunities. And again, you know, What's happening here is nothing other than cleaning up the water environment whilst growing one of the healthiest proteins available on the market today. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Does, does our local grower use your product or? Yes. 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 That's the only oyster farm I know, so yeah. I don't know where the next closest one is. Yeah. Well, as we were driving through your area, it's just like, look at that, look at that. You've got all these water and we're just, our eyes are popping out because the opportunities are phenomenal. One thing you might notice when the, the aerial shop is that there's 12 feet of water in there and the, the local people tell us that before you couldn't see the bottom and there's 12 feet of water when you look you can see the bottom so mm -hmm. over the years what we've done to modern nature what we've done to our waters this is actually cleaning that bay here so that's very important we think it's an important part it is doing good to the uh, community and the waters around yeah. and other fisheries are seeing the benefits as well you can see crab fishermen that are putting their pots close to the oyster farm now because obviously you create in uh, local environments of very healthy waterways where there's more nutrient, there's more food, therefore, you know, there's other opportunities as well. You know, it's bringing back things like seagrass so on and so forth. When, yeah, go ahead. <coughs> you want to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so the, they grow in the salt water quite well, do they? Yeah, it because has to have at least uh, 15 to 18 percent salinity. Okay, because I know Nolan's farm is in a, we call it a lake, but it's brackish water. It's brackish like, water, yeah, yeah. You can grow in brackish water. Yeah, okay. No problem. Did you have? Yeah. See, yeah. I, I thought it had to be brackish, but it don't have to be. No, it doesn't have to be. Okay. No. You. Your uh, ROI, return on investment, is uh, the first year you, you, your oyster. You, you can't bring it to market if I if I'm understanding this right. It well, takes a few years before they it's, it's it's really in this region. It would be a I would say you're probably more like the closer to two year cycle. Um, but let's say let's say it's a three year cycle. Um, a lot of startups what they do is is they will buy seed oysters which is ready for first year. Then you can buy the various different sizes and then just grow them to market. So you don't have to get caught in this three year cycle where 
you're going hungry for three years, yes. you can get into business and get your ROI moving quite quickly. Thank you. Yes. I'm, I'm quite interested in the, the easy flip uh, platform and how it works. So, so the oysters are exposed to sunshine and, yes. and, and, and the, the, the air, yeah. and so it kills all the fouling. All the fouling. Okay. So if there's any, if there's any uh, growth on the cage as well, sometimes you get like kelp and things like that, and that can restrict the flow. It also removes that as well. So, at the same time. so and you, you can keep them out. 48 hours or up depending? to 48 hours yeah. depending on in this area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so what is, is the shelf life of, a, of an oyster when it's out of the water and shipped around the world? Well, this is where we have a huge advantage on places like the US. Because our oysters go dormant in the winter, they hermetically seal. So we can have an oyster under temperature control out of the water for four months. So this gives us the export advantage. If I took you down to somewhere like uh, South Carolina, they will grow a full grown oyster in a season. But from being pulled from the cage to being sold, that has to be done within two weeks. So really their market is a domestic market. Our market opportunity is an international market. And fortunately or unfortunately, a lot of the economies that like to buy the oysters and bring that product in have done a, a very good job of uh, impacting their own environments where they can't grow healthy seafood anymore. So that is an opportunity for uh, you know, our regions. Okay. Councillor Strett. Uh, just another question I've got. Can I just... No, go ahead. To get the water, so in the wintertime, you fill them with water so it goes down and there's ice coming on top. Yeah. So I was thinking, to get that water out of there, I mean, do you have to dive mm -hmm. underneath and open something up? It seems to be quite, quite, a, quite a job if you have a whole line of cages like you. No, no, we basically, what happens is, we'll use a diver to, to sink them. So That's you right. have a boat that runs in front of them, takes the cap off, and then a diver will manipulate them down. But like I say, you can do a thousand a day, it's a very quick process. Oh, okay. When you're hauling them up, you have a derrick, which is basically a hauler, and it hauls on the main line and it pulls all the oysters, and you pull them over that, you saw the ramp with the platform? I saw that. And that's basically allowing you to expel, uh, and also you can do any servicing that you may need to do. Perfect, sorry, you see that. No, no, it's fine. Uh, great presentation, just curious, uh, <clears throat> what brings you guys here today? What, what are you, uh, not, I don't mean to ask the, uh, how should I say this, I don't mean to come off uh, as, uh, as rude, it's just what brings you here today? What can we do to help you, or, or what are you looking for from us? We're looking to help any communities right. that want to develop um, this as a viable industry in their locality. We have a track record of, um, that's basically 100% positive, where we've, we've done this time and time again. We've got initiatives going in North Carolina, in Louisiana, all across the Atlantic, and even into Iceland. Um, so my question to you guys is driving through this area and looking at the water that you have, you know, why not you? As a community, is this an opportunity for you guys to harness what you have on your doorstep without having a negative effect on your environment? You're actually improving your environment and also creating jobs and helping build your economy. I'm certainly glad you came. I see Charlene sitting here, so I don't know if Charlene found you guys or you guys found Charlene. You, Charlene <laughs> found you guys. It's, uh, I'm sure it's no coincidence. Charlene and I sit on a committee, an economic development committee for municipality and, and oyster growth or aquaculture in general, I guess is something we talk about yeah. a lot. So to condense it all together, basically, if someone were to come to us and say, look, I want to start a business, but I don't have you know, all the knowledge or know-how and I want to get into the oyster industry, we, we just plop them on to you and you guys. And we, we will basically equip them and educate them so they're successful. The other thing, I openly invite ev everyone and anyone to come and see our facility. Mm. Um, and also, we would take you on a tour of some local farms. You know, it's one thing seeing it on a video and listening to me giving a presentation. There's another thing about actually seeing it with your own eyes. Mm -hmm. um, it is working. People are very successful. And it is a good way of building a community. And are you 100% private business? Yes. Do you, how should I, do you set these companies up with a fee or do you sometimes invest in these companies yourself? No, nope. uh, basically tide rises all boats. We're an equipment mm -hmm. designer, developer and manufacturer. We want our customers to be successful. 
So, like I say, the the way the way our approach is is we we're not we're not looking for customers. We're looking for partners. Right. The guy who buys fifty, like Armin, is the guy who buys nine thousand. So, if we help them succeed, we succeed. Succeed. Right. It's a natural partnership. Right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing we want to mention is that we do have an experimental farm that we are really really excited about doing this spring. So we can bring you along our experimental farm and show you different stuff that would not bother anybody, any uh, local farmer or whatever, we can bring you out, show you how it's done, have you practice with us, okay. go up and down, yeah. show you how to sing, show you how to raise, show you how to flip, show you how to, what we do when we do it. So yeah. this is something we're really yeah. excited That's about. That's a good point. Yeah, we've got a team coming in from Iceland, we've yeah. got some people coming in from the UK, and it's like a dealership that you can go and, you know, manipulate, work this stuff, you know, it's one thing for me to turn around and say that's easy to flip, but you know what? Try it. Get in the water with us. And then you can pick whichever model that you like or fits best, best for you. Biggest feature out of this program, there's all kinds of different systems out there, and there's some that are bottom dwellers and some, but the biggest feature to the oyster grow system is the ability to air dry, kill fouling, and bring a high quality oyster to market. That's the key. That's where you get the money. If you do it just for meat, and the, the, the shell looks awful, you're not going to bring a, a shell that's full of fouling to an oyster bar in Toronto. Because by the time they get it there, and by the time you go up to, you're smelling something that's not very nice. You don't sell those oysters. The high quality uh, oyster will bring you the best return for your money. That's what the system would allow you to do. This is very interesting. I find, sorry, I, in our area, lobster fishery is the primary income for, for the majority mm -hmm. of, it's the, the economic driver in the area, but often you, you meet someone who's maybe tired and done it this whole life and wants to maybe yeah. venture off on their own and they're often looking for ideas and I'm, I'm yeah. certainly glad you guys came here and certainly made the wheels turn in my head. Actually, sure a lot of lobstermen down our way will get into oysters also because it's, there's a long season between, yeah. the off season oh, they work yeah. both. Mm -hmm. So it, it enhances and they, they, they keep their, their people with them. So that's a, a way of getting into, and into the industry. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. You? Um, so uh, one of the things that we had learned when we were talking with Nolan and Colton uh, with the Eel Lake Oyster Farm is that and, and oyster, this particular organization, there could be others, but we, we were uh, introduced to your business model, the template that you, yeah, yeah. That you supply to your, to yeah. your supplier or to your uh, buyers. To our partners. To your partners. And so, uh, thank you. So, language is important. So, uh, and, and it, it really takes the business plan component of, like if somebody's coming new and they're very interested in it, it's a template that it's it's really it's not difficult to apply and it's like it's a it's yeah. it, it was built by you for the yeah. industry which yeah. is really interesting and yeah. so for people that that in our in Argyle that are looking at this particular industry you know and and I mean I can't I can't you know push one company but but this company does have that template and maybe others do too but I'm just not aware of it but that that template has provided uh, some very I know that Nolan was very, very uh, appreciative of that. He'd be here today. I think there was a bit of a miscommunication. I think Colton was here well, yeah. earlier. Was here, we're, we're actually going to he, Yeah, there. so a bit of a, yeah. So I'm sure he'd have been here and, and, and uh, had a lot to say because uh, yes. Nolan is pretty passionate about what yes, he does it, too. So that, the, the essence of what you're talking about is exactly why, you know, we really defend that 100% record that we've built up over the years. And um, there is a regime, there is a regimen that you have to follow. Um, as Real, our CEO, says, it's oyster grow, it's not miracle grow. You do have to go out there, there is work to do. Um, but as long as you follow the regimen, you will be successful. You know, we've not lost anyone yet, and we're getting up towards 400 farms. What we classify as a farm is anyone over 200 cages. So from 200 cages, to 11,000 cages is our farm distributor. So we also have a lot of clients that we see as being the hobbyists, whether in the 50 or they're, mm -hmm. they're just starting out and see how it goes. They've also got full-time jobs as well. Um, but, you know, for us, a farm would be 200 up. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyone else? If not, I would just like to uh, thank you for the presentation. Very, very interesting. and. Uh, 
Very good information there for anybody who's interested, I'm sure. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Very really good. Thank, Thank you very you much. Get so this uh, uh, to take this gets uh, televised, yeah. and so some of our residents will see your presentation online on Facebook, and so it will get it will get promoted, distributed. And yeah. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. What's a cage for? We'll just wait and give them a chance. How much sure. is a cage? A cage, this cage right here is about $160. Cheaper than a lot? The bag, so probably everything in is around $180 to $185. And, uh, way better than I thought. Way yeah. better than I thought. Yeah. That's cheaper and than a lobster yeah, trap. Last lobster trap was 185. Was that right? It's a lobster trap? Yeah. Some of them they're building over 200 now. Yeah. Well, you can handle that the best. For water and everything, no? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Great presentation. Okay. I guess we can move on to our next our next uh, agenda item, which is number four: business arising for minutes. There's attachment on the first one. Where, what happened to mine there? This goes to the website, eh? It's the right yeah. typo. I can't. I can't enter that. Uh, I can't log into that attachment here. Same here. Just go straight to the website. Yeah. Did I not refresh it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. The welcome poll banners. I guess we just want to know where where we're at with that. Uh, is Tris, do you have any information on that, Tris? Or the only information that I have is that they have been sent to some councillors, depending if we had um, a contact person for the communities that we were putting the banners in, yeah. or they have been sent to that contact person. So we're starting to distribute the final designs to those people to get approval. Um, we have made changes on maybe two or three, and then once we get them all back, we'll be able to send it to um, our producer to make them and then we'll be able to put them up. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. 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 Yeah. You're okay with that one? The other one is dangerous or unsightly demolition funding, and there's no there's no attachment on that one. But that would be uh, that would be my fault. Yeah. I, uh, I added to the agenda as I was going out fishing, and I didn't have the template for uh, an explanation. So I apologize to other councillors for not giving you uh, much background. However, I did mention it uh, in a notice to motion at the uh, the previous meeting. I was at. Um, it's a long story. Uh, is shouldn't be inappropriate to use past examples, uh, CEO Muse, like, without mentioning any names, of course. Uh, yeah, keep the names on. Of course. Um, so as I've mentioned many times at this table, dangerous and unsightly is a huge issue in our area. I see it in Westport. I'm sure most of you see it in your areas. In the past, there's been municipalities have uh, the municipality has done their best to help out certain residents that don't have the financial uh, means to take care of the problems themselves to rectify it. The problems vary from, from here to here. It's, it's extreme to not extreme, uh, different situations. Every single situation has their own variables and it's hard to define it as you know one big problem. Whereas uh, sometimes if it's an unsightly, it's as simple as a phone call, clean this up. You're dealing with someone who, who's understandable and, and it gets done. A lot of the times it's either a, a financial issue or an unwillingness and it's something I've pondered many times how to fix and how to rectify and it's not a simple solution. I've, I've gotten calls from all, you know, all types of opinions from people throughout Westport on what to do with this and I've asked people, would you support your taxes, your tax money being used? 
to clean up someone's yard. And they said, of course, uh, you know, that's what our government's for, take our taxes and, and clean this mess up. I don't want to see this or this dangerous property. I don't want anyone to get hurt on this property and clean it up with my taxes. Then you'll get someone else who will say, well, no, don't use my taxes. Why should I pay for someone else to clean, clean up their mess? So it's, uh, I'm not telling any of you guys anything you haven't pondered before. It, it's, it's a major issue. In the past, uh, for example, in Westport, we had a, a home that there was a financial issue and it was unsightly and certainly fell in the dangerous category which is why uh, I think policy was used to, to tear down the area as well as the municipality did what they could to help uh, these individuals find a new home. Um, it, it ended up being on the same property. However, the old homestead was torn down and the bill, obviously the municipality is not in the business of tearing down people's homes for, for free. The cost of tearing down the, the dwelling was added to their tax bill. And work has been done with these individuals to make it as, as affordable as possible. However, it is still a burden and it, it's maybe something they can't handle. So a lot of the times what will happen is these homes in the future, I shouldn't say a lot of the times, but I force, that's completely incorrect, but sometimes or in the possible future, an issue like this, if the tax bill cannot be paid, what happens? It goes to tax sale. If it goes to tax sale, it comes here, it, try, it attempts to be sold. Likely, if it was a tore down property, if there's no immediate interest from a neighbor to, to either enlarge in their own property or something like that, often what happens at tax sale, the municipality loses money end up paying for it anyway and it's a long lengthy process and basically someone you know gets hurt in the process my thoughts are the reason this is on the agenda today is there's perhaps a chance for us to be proactive I don't know what that looks like I haven't even tried to think of what that would look like I only brought it here because I would like staff which know the ins and outs of these issues a lot more than I do I just hear from the individuals who have a hard time paying their bills if there was some sort of program in the municipality because we lose anyway you know, if, it, if we spend money on a lot and that goes to tax sale, it's, it's never that, you, I shouldn't say never, but it's not often that we, we get that full amount back. So if we're gonna lose the money anyway, why not be a proactive municipality and try to help these folks out before it gets to that point, before they get evicted from their lots or, or you know, certain situations like that. So the reason I brought this to the agenda here is to make a motion, and I am making this a motion, uh, to have staff at least look at what they feel would work as a policy for them that would hopefully uh, be a little more proactive than the way we do things now and possibly save time and issues in the future. This would be a costly uh, endeavor, but endeavor, but <coughs> maybe not when you look at how we've lost money at these tax sales over these, these lots. So I'm making it a motion to have staff draw maybe a few different forms of what they feel like would be a policy to, uh, hmm, how should I put this? Is it tear down or rectify dangerous and unsightly premises that individuals in a municipality cannot do on their own? That's your motion there. I'll Just check on that. I mean, amend you because I'm not right keen on the wording itself, <laughs> but. I think you all understand it just as so, so it's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or, or comments, Councilor Shred? I find it hard to, you know, jump on one side or the other side of the fence without looking at what it's going to cost. I mean, how much money are we looking at? Maybe that, that's what you're trying to do. That's exactly Try to, right. to, to just find out it's bad, I'm not which, which, which I'm all set with, yeah. I'm not making a motion to have the policy made today. No. I'm making a motion to have staff give us some options that they feel would work. Right. Um, to, and maybe not, it's just not just tear down, but it's to uh, rectify would be the, the better maybe, way. Maybe look at, at different municipalities, what they do, the staff right. could bring that back. Well, okay, I got you. Any other comments? Question? Question call for. All in favor, the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. I had a comment, but I kept it to myself. <laughs> okay. You can still make no. No. It's been, it's been passed. 
The next item, Department of Transportation Communications, and that is, there is an attachment to that, and I think we'll pass it on to Councillor uh, Albright. Sure. So I brought it up before. Um, we've talked about issues with, with most of us having issues with our gravel roads, not just our gravel roads, with brush cutting in the wintertime, with plowing, basically with um, Department of Transportation. We've tried to invite them in for a meeting. Um, we sent a letter. We have not heard a response. No, no response. We gave them a timeline of 30 days. We haven't heard anything. And I think from having sat on this council, we've heard several times, several councillors say we, we get complaints from residents on a regular basis. And basically, my understanding is we're, we'd like to have a, a, some dialogue with Department of Transportation on their you know, their grading schedule, what they plan on doing, you know, the brush cutting schedule so that we can have something to go back to our residents with. Yeah. Um, so nothing seems to be moving. And I mean, this is my fifth year on council and it's still not moving. Um, so I just kind of had been thinking about what do we do about that? Where do we, where do we go next? So they're not coming to us. So I had sent an email to, um, to Chris and I said, could we go to them? Could we, some councillors, I mean, I know it's it's difficult for all of council to, to go all together, but I think it would be good, if, you know, more than just me, because I think strength in numbers is, is a good option. So I thought if some of us would be willing to make an appointment to meet with um, the new area manager to have a conversation about, you know, their scheduling and with the new program coming about that the province has just introduced about uh, gravel road upgrades. It would be nice to have some input on what's going to be done in our area because people are going to ask us these questions and I don't have any answers for them. So I guess I didn't put a motion on there, but I would like to make a motion um, to see if we could set up an appointment with some council members if um, they are willing to go meet with the area manager of the Department of Transportation in Yarmouth. That's a motion. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Comments? Uh, I don't know it totally if that's the answer. Uh, I feel, that Nicole, you're, you're, you're dead on by what you're saying. I'm so frustrated over the whole thing. I've got issues. I went to visit this gentleman. We are EMO coordinator. Mm -hmm. I went there and I'm, that's being taped. I hope he's watching. He has done sweet nothing for us, sweet nothing. And this is two months. I've had the EMO coordinator email him again on the response. He hasn't even contacted us. I tell you what, we want to talk to his superior and we get his ass sitting on that chair right there so we can talk to him. I'm totally fed up with this guy. He's, something's gotta be done and we gotta go hire him, just meet with him privately. I'm scared we won't get nowhere. We should talk to his superior and see why is this guy not responding to us. I, but I'm not saying what you're doing is wrong, but I think we'll have to go higher. Uh, certainly upset over the whole thing. Councilor Murphy. And if there's a, if, if it can, uh, if, if a meeting can be arranged, uh, I, I would like to go myself mm -hmm. to support this because I've had issues with, and, and I've called them numerous times. And now when you call 2415, you go to Halifax. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's answered in Halifax. All the lines go there now. Now you can't call here no more. But, no. but I mean, I've had issues here just the other day that that the, the well brush cutting for 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 one uh, school buses in the Wishboard area uh, on a corner that, that you know it, in the fall the, when the, when the kids are being picked up it's halfway dark there and, and, and or just coming on you know and <coughs> like they they've gone right past us the red lights. I mean, hey, this is dangerous. And I've called on that and there's nothing has been done. Zero. I had another call last week and I called again about a, a, a sign, signage that's down. This is down. An ambulance was, was going, was going on the Newell Road. Went right past, the guy was having a heart attack. Went right past the Newell Road because there was no signage to where the Newell Road was. And I called them, and, I, and I've called them three times now, and they've got it marked down. And she told me they had it marked down. And I, I, I had called, and it's still, she said, we'll have it, she's gonna contact the signage people to try to get this put in there. But 
why not do it? Like, you know, like, why not do it? <laughs> they tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. So I would like to go to that meeting. If a meeting can be set up, I would like to be there myself. Yeah. Thank you. Council, Council Long. Very quickly, a quick story. Like Councilor Albright, five years ago I was elected, so I've been a councillor for five years. A couple months prior to the election, I was telling people I was going to run. And prior to actually campaigning, I was telling a family friend that I was thinking about it. He told me, he said, you know this pothole here, and it's on the corner of the Breakwater Road, which is the Jack Hyde Road, and the main, the main drag in Westport, which is Highway 334. He said, if you want to vote for me, it said, sorry, he said, if you want a vote from me, do something about that pothole that's been there for years. And I thought to myself, if there's one, you know, I never forgot that. And I said, as soon as I'm elected, I'm going to take care of that pothole one way or another. Five years later, and I can promise you, it's not by lack of effort on my part. That pothole is still there. It's the most utilized road in all of Westports where all the transport trucks turn to go to the breakwater for, for fishing purposes and to unload from the fish plants and the lobster pound there. I've had letters sent from all business owners to all the ministers since four year, five years ago, and that pothole is still there. And I took a picture of it this morning to send another email about that one pothole. Now I'm not talking about paving a road, I'm not talking about you know this, this big, huge hurrah. It's one pothole and it can't be fixed, and I've tried every angle and it just will not happen. I'm at wit's end. It, it's the, the phone calls I get the most for as a counselor is, is for, for roads, Highway. be it the road itself or signage or any issues with it, yeah. by far. And, and you know, it's a provincial matter. It's not even actually supposed, yeah. it's not a municipal matter. However, I never, you know, use that as an excuse. I, I do what I can to help out. Um, but kind of like he said, I'm not sure what the right answer is, but if, if a few counselors want to go meet in town, I'm definitely in. It's definitely one of our biggest issues in the area. Warden? Yeah. I, I haven't called recently, but you say you, you go to Halifax now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, play yeah. phone tag and get bounced it's around. 742 uh, four, four, and it's any, any, any of the, uh, yeah, any yeah. of the. It used to be in your yeah. yeah. One, does the municipal office have a direct line to somebody? Mm -hmm. Or you, would you, Chris, if you tried, you'd do, go same, through the same route as the general public? Mm -hmm. If we could get at least a line set up that could go from the municipal office at least to their office, then we could bring our concerns to the, I don't know if they want all nine of us to have access to to uh, somebody at the office, but at least the municipal office should be able to contact them. So political representative from the municipality can't have a direct line, there's something wrong. Troy. Think the nine of us could at least. Yeah, I would like that, but I don't foresee them bending to that. If somebody doesn't have the courtesy after being sent a letter to come and sit in front of us here, you know what? That guy should have a boot in the ass and, and, and his job should be let go. I mean, come on, we're the municipality here. Don't they have the courtesy of coming and sitting down and hearing what we're hearing? Something well, wrong. We're elected by the people, yeah. and we try to help the people when we get phone calls and we can't get nothing done. Mm -hmm. Simple. I'm to the point now, of course I've been here too long probably, but like Lucien said, that's the majority of the Not people come talk to me. It's, it's a highway provincial issue. And I'm just gonna go see Chris get a pocket full of uh, his business cards and, and start handing them out every time somebody stops me in Sobeys and complains about a road, I'm just gonna give him Chris's card for now on. It's getting that frustrating. Well, I've got a better one. Chris told, told somebody at uh, Carl's store, go see Dean, maybe he can do something. The guy came to see me. Now, that was a huge help. <laughs> Medrick Landy and Miros Hill. Couldn't believe that. <coughs> so you don't know where to turn. Any other comments? Okay. Even in our orientation package, though, that we received at the beginning when we first became counselors, it says in there that they're supposed to meet with us. Is it annually that it says in there? I believe, so. I'm be I believe so, because I remember reading that this this time around, like the second time around reading it and thinking, last 40 years we didn't no. see them. And I mean, we hadn't invited them, but this time at least we've invited them. Mm. It, it would just be nice to have a conversation mm. even. Could we not get to the minister, right to the minister or his deputy, 
and ask him, you know, we have sent this request. Did uh, Chris, did Chris send uh, a CC to the deputy minister or to the minister? We wouldn't have sent it that high. We would have remained in the we would have remained in the local, but you know, local MLAs would have been copied. Okay. Um, you know, we had a, a visit from the deputy minister uh, not yes. four months ago. The tri unit, yeah. Um, and the tri unit uh, meeting, and he was very accommodating. He was very open, and uh, you know, uh, from our perspective, from staff's perspective, we don't have an issue contacting the deputy minister if if the you know because that's you know um, staff to staff. If this council wishes to step it up a notch, and I mean, quite frankly, we have not received even an acknowledgement that we have sent a letter, even saying something along the lines of, we can't meet with you this month, maybe in two months, yeah. anything would have been. So at this point, you know, we've always, always been told by former area managers that uh, give us the courtesy to deal with the issue first before you send letters to the minister. And I thought that was a fair comment from a staff person. You've done that as council. Yeah. So you, you, you can absolutely write to the minister, um, and we can absolutely contact the deputy minister if that's your wishes. I think we should. Yeah. I think we should because this guy is not, is not moving. I think we owe it to our constituents yes, we do. to yeah. step it up. Yes, we do. We've done, we've tried everything right. It don't seem to be working, so let's try a little more. So, so let's well, vote on the first one, then I'll make a motion for the next one. Because, you, yeah, because we have a motion here that says, you know, that we will get some counselors to meet with them, that we will go to them. So this is the motion that's on the floor right it's now. Right. It was so that's what we have, and it was seconded. Second. So that's what we have to vote on at this point. Right. So if you're ready for the question on question. that motion, yes. question. all in favor, aye. signify by saying aye. 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 Contraminded, nay. Okay, so that motion, so that means that you are going to try to set up a meeting where some of us go to his office, Please have an appointment. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, Councillor Dartmar said you had another. So, I'll, I'll make a motion that we write a letter to the, the minister and the deputy minister. Is that who we want to address? Yeah. With? I think regarding we this yeah. subject that we've just been talking about. Yeah. Oh, exactly. second that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. No question. discussion. Question called for. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Contraminded nay. Carried. Yeah. Thank you. And Nicole, CC all the uh, local MLAs and MPs and. Right. Mm -hmm. And. Councillor priorities number five. Progress report. You've all had a chance to look at it. Yep. Any questions? Any comments? This is just for information. Yep. Yes. Okay. Go here. So the next one is the financial report, and I will turn Marcia's mic on. Right. You're on. So attached is the financial report to March 31st, 2017, showing a surplus of $198,170 at the year end. Um, if we were to look at some of the larger variances under the revenues on page four, the, one of the main ones, of course, the deed transfer tax, um, you see a surplus of almost $56,000. That one has been an ongoing all year. On page five, you'll see a surplus of $18,000 for the Wellington turbines. Um, this being our first year, we budgeted really low as we were unsure when the project was going to begin and how much wind it was gonna produce. Um, under returns on investments, those are higher than budgeted. Um, you see the West Pumnico sewer account. This one used to be recorded under the capital reserve, and now it is under the operations. So that one is showing there. Um, also, the D trend, the tax sale surplus. Sorry, um, some of the previous year's interest had not been transferred. Therefore, we had done we have done it this year. Um, under extraordinary revenues, the, on the second line, you'll see Argyle Historical Society other. 
that is the society that had um, received funding that we had not budgeted for. And this was for the archives microfilm scanners that they wanted to purchase, that they have purchased. So the expense for this is shown under the courthouse capital expenses. So that just that revenue just went against that expense. Um, moving on to expenditures on page seven. Um, I've combined some of seven and eight um, legislative, administrative, um, and IT. These are surplus of over $48,065. Many of these budget lines are not really known during the budget process, therefore often they can be set higher just to be sure. Um, you'll see under legislation, legislative that there is some savings under council and board and travel. Also, the fall UNSM is usually always budgeted for all the counselors. However, this year only half attended. Um, on page eight, halfway down the page, employer benefits. Most of these savings is due to the position vacancies and the gap before a new person was hired. Therefore, the benefits and CPP and stuff was not, not needed. Um, on page nine, under grants to organizations, you'll see the Mariner Center operational grant, the actual is over budget. This is their prior year deficit funding that was approved by you guys previously. Um, on page 10, under EMO miscellaneous, um, you'll see um, a deficit of 13,047. Um, this is 100% the cost of the drought. That's where we yeah. reported all of the drought yeah. costs. Um, also on page 10, you'll see under property inspection, um, the bulk of this surplus is due to the two positions, the building inspector and the facility maintenance positions that were vacant for a period of time. Uh, moving on to page 11, the airport is showing a surplus of $20,000. These two budget lines are contingencies in case they're needed and they were not used. Um, page 12, um, at the bottom there's some surplus and solid waste. There was less volume disposed than anticipated and these numbers are always hard to budget as they're not usually known year to year. Um, if you look under page 13 under doctor recruitment, there's a $30,000, 331 surplus showing. Um, there was 13,000 was uh, the amount that was budgeted as a contingency that was not used. Um, we also received repayment number two of two from Dr. Greg Thibodeau. He had not finished his, what is it called? Replacement. Placement. Placement. Therefore had to repay the recruitment. Okay, I wonder what that was. Grant okay. that we had given out. So we had gotten 50, uh, 60000 from him in the prior year, and the remaining fifty-three from him this year, and then two-thirds of that amount was reimbursed to the town and to the municipality. Okay. Each one. Yeah. And at the bottom, you will, I just wanted to point out the only other item um, was at the very end on page 17, the negative 100000 you see transferred to the cap reserve. That is the transfer that had already had already been approved by council. So, if there's any other questions, anybody have questions, Councilor Threat? I got four, four or five, but it'll be, be quick. It'll be quick. It'll be quick. Revenue from other sources, extraordinary revenue, twelve thousand. Mm -hmm. We're at, we're ahead with that. Uh, the reason for that is that if you look. Um, if you look on page, yep. let me just get it here. Page five. Yep. If you see the twelve thousand, ten thousand seven hundred and seventy-two of that is the funding that the Argyle Society received for the microfilm. That's what that is. Okay. It so, just yep. it was over. Got it. Yep. I see that home care. Could I keep on as a percent? Yes. One? Home care board expenses. $1,200, but we, we didn't use that, so we do pay for the board expenses uh, on home care. I thought they had a budget of their own. I didn't know we 
we put money for their exp for expenses for the board? Yeah, um, actually, we were not aware of this, but maybe Alain would have a better idea of explaining it better as he was in contact with Home Care about this issue. Well, that would just a question I asked. So we would receive, it's, it's actually that we received that amount and didn't. So we t every year we would receive that $1,200, and what it was doing was, was paying the municipality for the services of the board members, uh, which Callan is one of them. Yeah. And so what happened was every year we get this $1,200 to reimburse because we're paying our counselors, right? So, uh, so and it reimbursed us a, a portion of that. So um, that policy ended last year without our knowledge. Okay. So um, I think what they intended to do, and I think it was just a miscommunication, uh, the town and municipality approached home care and saying that they didn't require representation anymore, like it shouldn't be counselors anymore, it should be members of the public. So, so that was changed, but we weren't made aware of that. So we won't see that again. Again, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the other one, uh, Marsha, uh, I've got the EMO salary stipend at $8,200. Yes. So last year, uh, that person was doing a campaign, doing a campaign, so do they get paid when they're, I don't think they do get paid, they had to take a, a leave of six, six weeks, mm -hmm. I believe it was six weeks, but with six weeks, she was still, that person was still paid $8,000, so there's only $200 there. Do you, would you know what, why that would be, because if I, do a little bit of calculation, should have been about, we should have saved about 750 bucks yeah. if they had taken that six weeks, four to six weeks off, but we still paid 8,000 out of 82, and it's a stipend, mm -hmm. unless yeah. it was overtime or something. We, uh, it's a stipend, though. The, the, the answer to that is that another person was paid just, to assist us yeah. during that period. Same so same. that individual was not paid for the services, no. for EMO services during that period. But we did engage a gentleman from East Pudnico to help us with water distribution, yep. and he was paid a portion of that stipend. Very good. And the last and final question is, uh, the senior safety grant budget $5,000, and uh, it seems we're, we're in, a, in a, is it a negative 4650, and now let me find that again. Senior safety grant budget. And I find that quickly. So we put five thousand dollars, but it seems we got nine thousand. Yes. So it, did we get more than we? Is, is it uh, something that happens every year, which is a one-time thing? Or? It has happened the last few years, but it's one of those things that you take it. Going to happen. It's we get paid back portion of the senior safety coordinator's uh, salary from right. crime prevention, right. but we don't know if we're going to get that every year is depending on their budget. Right. So we don't usually budget it in, but the last few years we have received. Which is good, right? It's a plus we got. Yeah. Thank you, that's all I have. Yeah. Anybody else? If not, we need a motion to accept. Is that it? The motion to approve, to accept the report. It's no more. It's Second. Second it. Question. Question call. Um, oh, you have a question. I thought you were calling for the question. <laughs> <laughs> the audited budget, when are we expecting? August probably or earlier than that? Uh, geez, I hope earlier. I mean, they'll be coming in in June. June. Yeah. You're confident this is close to what's going It's close. There's a couple of pluses and minuses that uh, could still occur. We've asked, for instance, we've asked uh, for funding support from the Department of Municipal Affairs for the drought situation. We've not received any sort of confirmation on that. So that may or may not be recorded in the previous year. We may actually only record it in the new year, depending on what happens. So yeah. things like that, there's still some um, uh, to and fro. Yeah. Um, we should be presenting very soon uh, the year end for the capital budget which will give you more information around what happened in, in, in that fund as well. So we yeah. hope to do that for you uh, by the next meeting. Question on the motion. Question on the motion. Question from the call for. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contramite and nay. Carried. Okay.
Item 7, support for cancer unit in Yarmouth. Now again, there's no, there's no attachment, but I believe that came from uh, yeah, Council Board. Yeah, that came from me. Um, as I think you've all heard on the radio, Sandy Dennis is in Halifax for treatments, and uh, she got the ball rolling uh, that Yarmouth should have a cancer, full cancer treatment, radiation, and chemo. So they made a motion in Yarmouth to support this idea. So I would like to make a motion that we support the idea of having a um, cancer unit in Yarmouth Second. Hospital. Okay, we moved and seconded. Any questions, any comments? Uh, would Do, that, would yeah. that letter be sent to uh, to the provincial, the Department of Health? I that guess was my that question. Yeah, yeah, Department yeah. of yeah. Health, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you, that's all I have. And probably CC to all MLAs and yes. whoever. Yeah. Any others? Hearing none, calling for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contraminded nay. Motion carried. Next one is your uh, the draft 2017-18 operating budget and highlights. And I am going to pass that on to our CAO or to our CAO. So last year at this time we had an opportunity to look at the draft budget. Um, and we, you know, pushed to have that happen again at the end of April. Um, I, I, can, I can approach this a number of ways. I, I did add a qualitative document on the back, which would have been a late ad for you, um, but the budget has been there for, for um, you know, for a while. So it has been altered slightly since it was initially put in, but not significantly. So. Uh, the purpose of putting it here is not to get into any sort of debate around what should or should not be there. The purpose is to give you an idea what we've done and so you can and, and explain the why behind that and then maybe at our budget meeting we can dig into some of the details, right? Certainly, I'm happy to dig in the details today. I'm just saying that, um, you know, whatever you have in terms of questions or comments, we're, we're here to entertain that now. Um, but uh, I mean, if you want to get dig in like real deep, um, we can, you know, mm -hmm. certainly that's a budget meeting that that typically you 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 do as as council. Right. But I will um, highlight certain things that are new, and then maybe and I know if you have any questions or concerns, certainly this is. I didn't mean to suggest that you couldn't have that conversation. I'm just saying that mm -hmm. I'm just saying that our intention as staff was was to present preliminary numbers and, and to hear your initial input on it. So, um, so I'm going to read my notes on the budget as opposed to having the numbers in front of me. Uh, what you might want to do is have the numbers in front of you and so as I describe them, you'll see them. So, um, so I'm obviously starting on page one. Well, that shouldn't be too obvious, but we're accountants, but anyway, um, so the taxation revenues, just want to say overall there is a 2% increase from the prior year. Most of that is driven from, from residential growth, so meaning new, new construction and also market adjustments. So uh, market adjustments meaning uh, uh, increase, increase in market, uh, most of which would have been restricted by the cap on assessment. So there might be a lot of situations where, and you might see this in your, on your own tax bill, is that you got your assessment this year and your market value went down compared to last year. That is entirely possible that some of your residents have seen this. However, they will still potentially see an increase in their tax bill because they were not being taxed on the market value. They were being taxed on the cap value, which is lower than the market, okay? Five years ago, that gap was quite considerable for the municipality of Argyle and a lot of rural municipalities. But what has happened is that the market has shrunk in rural Nova Scotia. So market values across rural Nova Scotia have been decreasing generally. Not all, but in certain areas have been decreasing. And so as the cap increases and the market decreases, the gap between those two numbers is now starting to close uh, quite a bit and in some cases on some properties uh, in fact they're the same number so every every year where the market might go up and down they might see that change instantly on their bill depending on what it is 
So that's information that we can certainly, we can certainly uh, promote on our, on our social media around understanding your tax bill. It is kind of complicated. The cap on assessment um, is complex and uh, the AMA and the UNSM's position has officially been that it is an unfair cap and that it treats people unfairly and people that go to sell homes and purchase other homes feel the pain, particularly in areas like CBRM and HRM where market values uh, might, might be, uh, might, the gap might be different. It hurts a lot of people like seniors, for instance, that are in their homes and they feel like their home is too, is too large for them and they look to downgrade. They get a, they get a shock when they, they buy a home that's way smaller, but then the cap disappears and they have an unknown uh, property tax issue. So anyway, I don't, I'm not trying to go, not to go too far down that road, but, but I'm just saying the cap is restricting some of our growth, but it also has restricted some of our, in, in the years where the market has decreased, it has also decreased our downside. It has restricted the downside of market reductions. So all that to say, you might not remember all of that, but a 2% increase this year, please remember that. <laughs> so so it, it represents about $100,000 in, in municipal re uh, residential revenues, and there's a total increase expected of about 123. Well, of course, some of those increases also increase our expenses, which we'll hit a little later. Uh, the deed transfer taxes budget has been increased by $17,000 to more accurately reflect, reflect our history so that we don't have to tell you 12 times that we under get underestimated. Uh, we'll only t tell you 10, 10 times next year. So revenues from own sources, um, that includes interest on investments um, and, and other revenues that we generate internally. Um, we provide services to other organizations such as, um, such as the REN and, uh, and the Industrial Commission for IT services. So that's included in there as well. The revenues are expected to remain fairly stable. Uh, however, the COMFIT revenue is expected to increase uh, by about $10,000, so what we're expecting this year. And I think that number is still potentially low, but we don't have a, a lot of history. And when, I, and when I don't have a lot of history, I guess on the low side. Yeah. So uh, um, we managed to, to be in the about 35,000 range after eight months of operation. So if you do the math, if you go, if you multiply by 12 and divide by eight, that number will be higher than 45. So just, just letting you know, uh, small c conservative. So uh, conditional transfers from provincial and federal governments, again, fairly stable from last year, but there's been a lot of changes in, in, in what is coming in and, and what isn't. So last year we had funding for active transportation strategy that we brought provincial money and federal money in to pay for. Well, that was a one-time event that's no longer there. So the expense isn't there and neither is the revenue. However, we are showing $23,000 coming in from the province to complete the investment readiness work um, for aquaculture in Argyle. So that was thanks to an application that we, that we uh, and, our, and our contact with the province, with the Department of Aquaculture, aquaculture has resulted in funding that will help us set the stage for potential investors. And you had a presentation today by one of the suppliers. Um, so, so just just to give you a, a taste of, you know, of, of what that could look like. Um, so, again, overall, there's not a huge change in the number. Uh, last year it was uh, 81, and now it's 70, so it's slightly lower. But um, again, over. Uh, we don't have associated expenses with that, with that decrease also uh, has decreased the expense. Uh, one other thing, transfers from our own reserves, and what you'll see is, is a huge transfer, and you should know what that is. That's the transfer for the uh, Domtex demolition, which will occur this year. <coughs> and so uh, we had estimated it would occur a little faster, which is why we budgeted for it a part of it last year. So we are budgeting essentially the full project this year. The, and this is obviously a, a partnership between our two units, our two partner units in, in the town municipality of Yarmouth. Uh, we also included um, $100,000 coming from the East Pumnico Water Utility. We're anticipating about a $100,000 project uh, to uh, refresh the East Pumnico Water Utility. Most of that will be on holding tank and 
and some of the related equipment. Um, that money is is not paid for by the taxpayer. It's paid uh, by the municipal taxpayer. That money is being used from the divestiture, from the, uh, the, the fund that we received from the province when the province told us or asked us politely to take it over. <laughs> so the 100000 is going to come from there. So that's not actually reflecting in any uh, cost to the municipal taxpayer at this time, and nor will it, actually. So if we go to page two, we see um, expenditures uh, listed. Yes. Sorry. Before you go to expenditures, can we go back to revenue for just a second? Absolutely. You mentioned the ComFit, like a lot. For the, to clarify for the public, we should mention that is our uh, two windmills that you see that went up last summer in the Rose Road, the Rose Road. up in Wellington. Yeah. We're a third owner, and the 45,000 projected income this year will be coming from those windmills. So that's what he meant when he said the ComFit project. Thank you. So. Thank you. So, and, and the residents of Argyle should also know that the money that was utilized to purchase those came from federal gas tax. So that was from taxes that people pay on their fuel consumption. So what, what we all liked about the project is that we're using that money and we're actually creating renewable energy with those funds. And it's creating an income stream for the municipality. So renewable thanks money. for renewable money. Right. So thanks for uh, clarifying that because I, I get a tendency to talk well, speak in riddles. You like the and we're politicians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> exactly. So, so uh, on page two, the expenditures. Um, if we look at the general government services, if we look budget to budget, it's almost identical. Um, and so where we have savings in some areas, we have expenses in others, but overall it's, it's remained essentially the same. Uh, the thing with general government services, and Marsha had mentioned this in her presentation, is that there's a lot of line items there that, that actually have an element of contingency or we're not sure if it's gonna happen, but, it's, but we're gonna have to put it in our budget in case it happens. Things like repairs to our buildings and, and uh, legal services and other consultant fees. You may, you may not use them, but we have to budget for them in case. Yeah. And so what happens often is that the actual expenditure is lower than budgeted. Every year that I've been here, that's what's happened. So, however, the, uh, this year, one thing that will absolutely not happen is the election. So we had the election last year, we had budgeted $35,000. We actually came in better than that, but, but this year that expense should be zero. So that goes away, but then other expenditures have increased, uh, one of which is an increased uh, grant to the Mariner Center, which uh, is actually being budgeted for more accurately, in my opinion, at the front of the year, as opposed to asking for forgiveness later. They're asking for permission now for a funding amount, which you will have to approve as council, of course. And other things such as like salary, salary uh, and um, other technology services, audit services, et cetera, uh, conference costs, grants to org. So all of those slight increases or, or, or more than $10,000 increases are essentially offset by the election cost or cost savings, I should say. So protective services is always higher every year. Uh, most of that is driven by uh, the RCMP services, we're anticipating a 3% increase. We have not received that confirmation yet from, from the province. However, they gave us a bit of a warning, so we have a pretty good idea it's gonna be that number, which increases 30 by our budget by $32,000. Um, there are some changes in the way that we budgeted in protective services, uh, one of which is under the property inspection and public works. The uh, Louis Boudreau's position, which is facilities maintenance, remains in that department. However, Wayne Hubbard, our field maintenance position, has been shifted to the recreation department as it made more sense for him to report directly to recreation as 90% of his work relates to fields. So it made more sense to align it differently. Uh, Louis and Wayne work together, but they actually report to different people. Uh, so also, uh, and so for the, for the rest of the expendi expenditures, I will say that, that fire protection, for instance, has not been approved by uh, the volunteer fire group. So, so anything you see here in terms of sewer, wastewater for Tuscate, West Pamnico, and the fire 
has to be consulted first before it comes back for final approval. Transportation services is showing a $12,000 savings compared to last year's budget. Last year's budget was 333, 328. This year's 321. Uh, there's a uh, there's a $34,000 savings under the active transportation line because we'll that, like I mentioned we that's a one-time expense expenditure, but there is an increase a significant increase in the airport operational support. Uh, that line has three elements in it and one of which is, is on the agenda uh, for consideration, for approval. Um, it's actually not a grant to the airport, but it would be a grant to the REN, but it does relate to airport economic development. Uh, the liaison and oversight committee of the airport will be able to brief you as we get to that line item. But just so that you know, that contemplated potential expenditure is included here. I'm not trying to presume you're gonna say yes, I'm just, I, I wanna show that that, that we've, we've incorporated it here. If you choose not to go down that road for whatever reason, then obviously this, this budget will change. So when, you, when we hit that decision, you'll know what, that it's in here. Um, environmental health uh, is, is showing, uh, that's the sewer and East Pubnico water utilities. It's showing the savings, but all of that gets paid for by the users anyway. So that's, that's a wash, essentially, for you. Um, Garbage collection and disposal, we're holding pretty solid. Uh, 690,000 compared to 680. Uh, we did increase the unsightly and dangerous premises budget. Last year we had it at 7,000, it came in at 12,008. That was due to write-offs um, from, from previous cleanups that we could not collect through tax sale. And so we are increasing that budget to 18. We don't have a particular plan of action yet in place for the 18, um, and I imagine that that will, the motion tonight potentially influences what we can do and whether that number needs to change. So again, preliminary, but we're expecting that number to go up. Medical clinics expected to hold essentially the same. Um, we always anticipate a certain amount that, to go to doctor recruitment incentives. Last year we didn't have any, and it's possible we don't have one now. Um, but, but we know that, there's, that there are internists and pediatricians, et cetera, that might, that might be interested in coming to the region, and there might be a request that comes to you for consideration. Um, environmental development is, again, very, very close to the budget of last year. 448 compared to 455 this year. Uh, I have included a couple of new things in there that you should be aware of. Uh, one is that we put a line item for aquaculture specifically for $20,000. If you remember, we're getting 23 in income. There's a reason why we're getting more. We asked for an administration fee because we are administrating the, the project on behalf of uh, any anyone the province the proponent so we actually are gonna make money on that initiative um, it's it's basically considering our time and energy in the project so and so the other amount is uh, a ten thousand dollar amount for housing initiatives you have you have indicated that housing was a priority and so this would be for any sort of operating costs relating to housing like if we needed to develop a study if we need to obtain information or get it, it, it it's not intended to be capital in nature it's not intended to be an incentive for somebody to come in and do housing it's intended for us to have room in case we need to get additional information so it's an from an operational perspective not a capital yeah. perspective okay so 10,000 should be plenty for the operating component of that priority uh, recreation and cultural uh, is showing an increase overall um, of 32,666. Um, so it was 529, 529,900 last year. Now that includes the library and the courthouse and, and recreation and active living. This year is slightly higher. And one of the biggest reasons, almost the only reason, is, is uh, transferring the, the position from public works to, to recreation. So it's now showing there. So where Public Works' public works budget actually increased uh, uh, for three or four initiatives, and that increase, uh, it's hard to tell. It looks like pub Public Works Department hasn't changed very much, 
but it actually has. And so, and some of the expenditures are now in recreation. So we can dig in deeper in terms of what that means uh, in the future, but that's, that's why it's showing higher in recreation. So in recreation and acting, active living are together now, so that's correct. active living is no longer? It, it is, it is, it continues to be, but what we've done is uh, we've, we've, we've essentially combined the two departments. They're still, they're, they're still going to work the same. <coughs> it's just it, it was not really that practical. We were separating program expenses, and really we didn't have to because they were essentially doing things together. And so we just tried to make it simpler. Yeah. So, and uh, you know we still get the twenty five thousand dollar grant. We still yeah yeah. And so and as you as you are aware, uh, Jeanette is taking on a more active role in the active living piece. Uh, and, and Natalie's taking a little bit more on the, uh, the di director uh, responsibility. So okay. even the way that they're going to work, they're okay. going to work slightly different, and so the budget reflects a slight change in the way they're going to operate. Okay. So um, n not a big change, but certainly uh, one that, uh, that, sh that I think is positive. So education is... Uh, on the last page three, education is only up slightly. Uh, that is, that expense is based on uniform assessment. Last year, if you remember, our uniform assessment almost never changed. Um, and so in the year after that, it affects these expenditures. So because we had very little change last year in the uniform assessment, this number doesn't change very much. Next year, it will go up by about 2% because that's how much our taxation assessment went up. So it's always a year late, just so that you know. So it, it is remaining pretty good. I think next year it'll be harder. It'll be a, a bit more difficult to, uh, to make the budget work because, because of that the potential increase will be much larger than that. And so finally, um, transfers to your own reserves, the transfer to the industrial commissions included in that number, as well as a transfer, uh, an, um, an expense uh, line item for the East Pumnico utility work, your debt to, uh, your debt repayment for the West Pumnico sewer, which is paid for 100% by West Pumnico residents or users of the system is included there. And I have increased the transfer to the capital reserve from 120 to 135 um, in this budget. And so that's the highlights. I don't know how highlighty it was because I went into some detail. Um, clearly, this is, this is a good draft. So meaning it, it is subject to your, inter to your changes, to your suggestions, uh, where we have discretionary income, clearly, and discretionary expenditures, clearly. We, we don't have a lot of movement on things like education, as you know. but. On discretionary uh, line items, um, certainly we want to have that discussion and make sure council um, has a chance to ask all the questions they wish. I'm happy to entertain any sort of preliminary questions or comments at this time. Councillor Surratt. Uh, do you feel this is a tight budget? Um, I, think, I think it was, uh, I, I feel like this budget was a bit better than last year. Because, because of the increase in the revenue uh, percentage combined with my point around the education. So we got a little bit more on the top and a little bit more, um, uh, on the a little bit less pain on education, okay? So it's, I think, you know, certainly, um, and if you, if you notice, there's, there's really, it, it does balance and it balances with very little amount coming from another area. Like, so there's no big anticipated transfer from a surplus. You know, what, what will happen here is, is uh, it, sh it, it, I mean, we can certainly, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it was probably a bit more manageable this year compared to last year. And the first one, last mm -hmm. question to it is, uh, do you see any download? Uh, obviously you've, you've prepared, in this budget, do you see any downloading from the province uh, maybe next year? Because certainly you, you don't see it here, but it seems like a letter you had sent us from, uh, the, from uh, Mr. Churchill 
from the municipal government mm -hmm. uh, minister that there was some stuff uh, in the in notice, a one year notice. So do you feel that be even, even with education, there might be some other stuff, or at this moment you don't really know? Uh, you know it's a hypothetical question. Well, see, the, the, the difficulty with, with what they've done is they've given us a one year notice. Yes. The intention of the one year notice was to say, in one year, you're going to have an increase in environmental costs of $5,000. Be warned. Okay, that was the intention. What's happening now is, is the, the letters are saying, well, you might see an increase in this. We're not sure what it is yet. So it's not really a one-year notice. It's like a, it's like a one-year, oh, by the way, this might happen. So, I mean, we, we, we and our experience has been is they've given us one-year notice on the municipal auditor, municipal uh, auditor general that never happened, right? And so, and they've given us notice on the cost of DNA which will go down this year, but maybe up again next year. That's very insignificant cost to us. Yes. So, so I wouldn't say it's anything considerable. Things like uh, expense, um, the, the new transparency committee might come out with things that might cost us money, i.e. you know, additional uh, resources around expense transparency, uh, that might cost us money. And they have been for a while now uh, messing around with the fiscal review work and the town task for force work, which had made a number of recommendations. And one of the biggest ones that would have an impact on us is the cost of, of roads and road maintenance, which appeared to be a popular topic <laughs> a little earlier. So, so uh, but this, this is, their, what they're saying is the position of the towns and of the province is that there's an inequity between what the towns pay for roads and what rurals pay for roads. It, that's actually a true statement. So, so how that works itself out and how other things might change. This year, there's nothing, it's, it, whatever, whatever's coming is there. Is there. Yeah. But, but next year and the year's future, um, yes, you, you might see some things that are downloaded. One of the things that is being indirectly downloaded on us is through Waste Check. Uh, Waste Check is receiving less money for diversion and that is impacting what Waste Check is looking for from the municipalities. So in this budget, we're showing an increase of about $4,000 or five that's going to waste check for their operations. And, it's, and that's directly because the province has said, all right, we're reducing our divestiture funding. So the money has to come from somewhere. So they either do less or they have to ask for us for more. That's a download. So there are, there are indirect ways that that still happens. Good, thank you, very good. Any more questions? Just that. Mm -hmm. I guess we will have to set up a budget meeting in, in the very near future. And from what I'm seeing, it shouldn't be a very long meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we typically do the, the, the run through, and then we also do the grants to organizations uh, spreadsheet, the, the work that we do around. So. We can set that plan up now if you wish. I think last year we did the grants to organizations after our regular council meeting. And then maybe two days later, we had a second meeting and we were done. I'd like to see it done be everything done before the 15th. We'll, we'll make it happen. So, so the, what you haven't seen is the capital, which we endeavor to give you uh, this week in your, so take a look at your emails. Um, it should be by the end of the week or early next at the very latest. So you'll have plenty of time to look at it. That one you really need to look at a lot more because A, you don't, you don't see the capital budget very often. You deal with operations all the time, capital not so much. And those are bigger numbers. So um, you know we're gonna be including things like rural internet and, and other such projects. And so we'll have, that may have, we, we may have to deal with that one even uh, separately from the operating conversation, right? but but all before the fifteenth. Okay. No, it's not necessary, but I mean, it makes it easier for me to get here. It's possible. It's 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 all possible. Okay. okay. So, if there's no more questions, we don't need any anything on this. It was no. Um, I apologize, I've, I've spoken probably too long on it. One of the things that I think you should be aware of is included in this budget is a contemplated decrease 
in the interest we charge on overdue taxes. Okay. So you'll see that in the highlights. So the average rate across Nova Scotia is pretty much what we charge, which is 16%. So in this, in this interest environment, that's quite high, uh, particularly. And so, so one of the things you might consider, and it's already contemplated for in the budget, is, is a potential reduction in that interest rate. And that should be done really, we do that by motion. We, we could do that by policy, but we do it by motion. Um, what does that do? Well, it allows people that are having a bit of trouble, a little bit, it, it's helping Makes those, it those people um, to pay their bills. So um, you, can, you can do different things around that, you can, but uh, we, we're just contemplating a decrease. And the only reason why we're suggesting it is, is uh, the, again, the current interest, uh, the current interest rates on, on debt are quite low. The sixteen percent has been there forever, when when the debt uh, uh, was higher, yeah. that the the prime rates were higher. Okay. The history that. to that was because we wanted people to pay their taxes before they paid the credit cards. So that's why we had a high credit. Mm -hmm. So they would be interested, get their taxes paid. If you bring it too low, then they're going to concentrate on other bills that have high interest. And, and that's, that's the balance, yeah. right? That's the balance. So for the budget meeting, we can, we can provide you information on what other units are doing. That might give you some, some information sure. on whether or not that's a good idea. Okay. Okay, I guess we'll move on to the MC, which is the airport. Yes, the Li Liaison and Oversight Committee discussion. Uh, as you remember, at our last meeting, I brought that in my, uh, in my report, that uh, there was a decision at the committee to allot $100,000 and that was for and that was for uh, um, hiring of uh, an extra person, economic development type of person to look for possibilities of what could be done at the airport. So I guess we're looking now basically for a decision. Um, it's uh, it our our total uh, our contribution would be roughly 32,000 and the other two units which is which is Yarmouth and the town the municipality and the town of Yarmouth have both brought it up to their councils and have approved their part of it so I guess now what we're looking for is uh, uh, a motion to I guess we're looking to we, we we'll discuss it first so that you can so that you know or or that if you have any questions but uh, that's what we're looking at to have the hundred thousand dollar fund and it's not to say that's a maximum of a hundred okay if that costs less than costs less and if it doesn't happen we don't pay we're not, we're not just going to put thirty two thousand dollars not going to spend that unless something happens so. So, is there any questions, any discussion on that? You've all seen the, uh, okay, Councillor Stray. Uh, I guess maybe I, I was at the, the uh, liaison oversight yes. meeting. meeting uh, so, the, 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 who's driving, who's driving does this request? Actually, I mean, I know we got it at the liaison oversight committee that uh, we should be looking to certain maybe projects that they can go into. So, is it, is it the, uh, it's, it's not our our manager. Is it that board that's between us? I don't want to name a name, but there's right. Yeah, random name. So are they driving this? That they they feel there's something because I don't know what it is they're looking for. Right. There's something in the fire there that they think they can do, and I just feel that I'll finish that we've put so much money in there. Is this just another one of those case? This is what I'm scared of. I mean, I'm going to vote on the in favor of the 32,000. I mean, let's, let's, but who's driving this request? Yeah. That's what I didn't get at that meeting. That's a great question, actually, because, because it's being driven by a number of different 
uh, groups. So oh, okay. what's happening, so it all started with the, it certainly that conversation started at the airport board level yes, okay. where the manager indicated that he can't work for the business and on the business at the same time, okay? And so we know when we hired uh, our airport manager that he was supposed to be an operations manager. Yes. So we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't look for, nor did we expect him to be an economic development officer. Yes. And so what's happened as a consequence is a lot of opportunities that seem to be, some of them not legit, and some of them very legit, that come up. And so how do we know if, how, how does he handle that? He can't handle it on his own. And who, who else can handle it? Well, none of our economic development officers, nor the REN, have the resources to do that, which is why they're looking for additional resources. So the, the airport's position uh, stance on it is that that person should be hired by the airport for the airport. The owners had a different view, and so, and 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 the Wren also had uh, met with the board of the airport board, and so we had members of the liaison and oversight committee of the Wren, and we had the Wren board, and we had the airport board meet and talk together about the economic development opportunities that could happen and what became obvious very fast to the REN board was you don't have a closer. You have a, a board chair who knows practically everyone on La Planète Terre, on, on, on the planet Earth, right? She is extraordinarily well connected. But, but, if there, but if there's some work to be done in order to like create an agreement or, or do whatever it takes in order to execute a, a business deal, we can't expect a volunteer to be able to do that. And so that was really the disconnect or the, the need that the REN had identified as well very quickly in that conversation. How we execute that work is, th I think there are different views. So I think the owners or some of the owners uh, were very adamant that if it's economic development, it should go in the REN. The REN has a strategic plan for the region and one of the biggest assets of their economic development plan ought to be the airport. It's a great way to engage the, uh, the economic development um, uh, organization with what's going on. So it was a good way to connect the two. Um, I think the airport board really wanted that person to be working at the airport for the airport. Uh, the reality of the situation is, and I know this is long-winded, is that, is, is that um, uh, this particular position is actually unlikely to be an employee. It's, it's more likely that it's going to be somebody uh, well connected in aviation or, or aerospace from the city or from another area that can make connections. They may not even work out of our area. Right? If, we're, if we're looking to drum up business, we have to be where business is drummed up. So we, while there is no concrete plan on who that might be, whether it's a firm or whether it's a, or somebody that's retired from business, uh, the need was identified. We know it could be potentially expensive. That's why there was a cap set at a at a hundred thousand. And I think what the liaison and oversight group said was, you know what, we can't afford to to not try. Try at least try. For some of these opportunities, there are some in the pipe. They're confidential. They can't be disclosed at this time because, for obvious reasons. But but there are things that could that could produce something quite uh, positive for the region, um, and we just didn't want to lose that opportunity because we were under resourced. Right? Thank you. Well, that's a great great answer. Yeah, right. so, that's so these opportunities have been referred to as low lying fruit, right? Low hanging fruit. Yes, it it <laughs> is uh, it is not hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of consulting fees to figure out whether or not these things are viable or not. That's not what we're talking about. No. What we're talking about is, is partnership with NSBI and other partners on two or three very specific initiatives that have already been raised by Nova Scotia, Power, uh, Nova Scotia Business Inc. and the board. They've had conversations about these opportunities. So, they may not come to fruition. It's just like it's like anything else. But it. But we're not talking about investing a bunch of money on consultants to do a study. This is about actually sitting with business and trying to iron out something. So so, um, yeah. So so we think the REN board is well equipped to 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 find to help us find that person, um, and they have agreed in principle to to provide supervisory. 
to, to provide a supervisory role for this position. Mm -hmm. Is that person. something that we were discussing, whether or not we're three units, who, which unit is this person going to work for, or who's going to be supervising this unit, and, and like you said, would be better if the rent took, took over. Mm -hmm. Councillor Bon. Actually, my question was answered. I was going to ask if there was any more information in the logistics of who or, or what okay. this entity might look like, if it was going to be in-house for rent or if you were going to hire it out, but you, it's not been decided. No, but it's more likely going to be uh, a combination of utilizing the existing staff of the REN and hiring somebody third party. So I imagine there'd be some coordination done by the staff of the REN currently, which we already pay for, mm -hmm. and then there would be uh, an add-on for a, s a specific expertise depending on what we're lo looking at. This budget of 100000 is it solely for, for wages, or is that a budget for operational costs for this person? The whole thing, I think. It's, it's all in. All in. All in. That's so our maximum. Portion. Maximum. Yeah. Maximum 100000 yep. Yes. So it's highly likely then the wages wouldn't be 100000 they'd be much lower. I'm just concerned that the right person might cost more than that. The right person would probably cost more than that. This is anticipating that we wouldn't we wouldn't be utilizing this service for 12 months. Could uh, be six months. It could be so. Uh, it be it would be somebody that would command a, a, a higher price because they have a very specific expertise. Could be six months to when? What 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 dignifies saying okay there? We well, um, there is no set uh, date. There is no set. Plan. The only thing is, let's see what we can get as a budget, and then let's work the plan around what our fiscal capacity is. Mm -hmm. So I can't say here today that the REN or the LNO Committee of the Airport wouldn't come back if something was working very well. They might come back and say, we need a little bit more. Can you handle it? Now, that might come out of the airport budget, or it may come here. So I can't, I can't say it's an... It, 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 it appears today to be all in, but we don't have all the information yeah. just yet to confirm with a lot of accuracy at this time. And I, I fully understand, you know, the need for, for uh, privacy around what they are working on because it's still in negotiation stages, but you do feel like there are uh, matters at the airport that, that justify needing this, that there's a hope, I guess, is, is what I should say. Well said. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been privy to some of those private conversations, and um, uh, one in particular involves uh, a very legitimate organization, a very legitimate organization in Nova Scotia that, uh, that is working currently with NSBI on a number of things, and, and the airport has been identified as a potential asset for, for growth for their um, project. Interesting. So, we, ju we just want to be certain because I feel everyone at this table probably feels it. the same as me. We want it to grow, we want it to work, but boy, it's getting expensive. It's getting expensive. <coughs> yeah, I, 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 I think that sentiment <coughs> is being heard. It's, it's just a not, not just around this table. It's yep. also the other owners are starting to get a little bit concerned as well. No, sir, all right. I just had a question that was kind of answered. I was wondering timeline, like time-wise, right? Because we do have an agreement. We we went into an agreement, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, that we had said that that we would go back in 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 for four years, mm -hmm. am I correct? Yep. And at least one year's gone by, right? Possibly two? Uh, I'm just, it, it feels like we spun our two. wheels for so long now that I'm like, when are we going to get something concrete? Yeah, I, um, I think that, uh, um, I mean, I don't know, I, I can't crystal ball the answer to that question, but I think that, I think what we underestimated was the amount of work that, that was required by the organization to catch up the airport on some regulatory issues. Mm -hmm. So, so there was a lot of what's going on. Why isn't there anything going on? Where, where, where in the it, it was like looking at, it was like looking at the house and saying there's nothing going on at the house, but all the while the foundations being like rebuilt from within. So I think there was a lot of that internal work that doesn't, that doesn't show right. You don't see it, but was required in order for the certification to continue. 
So I think there was a lot of time and energy spent there, which I think there was a, that wasn't known by the owners of the airport at the time, how much work and energy it was going to be put in that. So I think that's part of the reason why it's like, phew, right? Um, I think, uh, yeah, so. And I'm also, I'm in favor of this as well because I feel like this is our, our best chance at getting a concrete answer, you know, getting some real, um, you know, real information on this would be a go or this, you know, what we could possibly do there. So yeah, I definitely, but I was just curious as to, I know it is hard to, but I just want to know, is it here? Is it, you know, is it going to, I think those opportunities are certainly going to be worked on in this fiscal, come, like in the next mm -hmm. three, six, eight, twelve months. Mm -hmm. um, how they get worked on is hard to know, and which ones get worked on is right. difficult to know until we get the right people, because we're it's beyond our expertise. Mm -hmm. yeah. With only a hundred thousand dollar budget, and I share the same same concerns Lucy in it. Who's going to take on a job like that with virtually no job security? It's and not knowing how long they're going to be there, and 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 I'm thinking a person of that caliber, a hundred thousand dollars, is not going to go very many months, and then we're going to be back here in six months or even less, and they're going to say talking about the pipe he was talking about, pulling these things out of the pipe, where they're going to come back and say, well, they've moved them down the pipe a little bit further. And it's just going to be a continuous cycle of a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, and like Nicole said, when do we stop spinning the wheels? So that's my concern. This hundred thousand may sound like not a lot, but it's just the beginning. So our, uh, the only response I'd have to that is 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 you're right. A hundred thousand probably doesn't pay for a person's salary for twelve months, based on the type of person that we're looking at. So it is more than likely going to be utilized to engage a, a contractor that does this and other things. So it would be, and, and so we would have a specific contract that would say, you know, you've got this much time, this is, you know, let's, let's execute these things, be very clear about what we're looking to execute. And if, you, if, they, if he or she or the organization doesn't ex execute, we've, we've given it a shot. Like this is, there is risk associated with this. It, it will not necessarily bear fruit. And that's, I just, like, let's be real. That's, that's possible. But, but, but we won't get any, we won't, we, the, the probability of, of something occurring there is far less if we do nothing. We, yes. Because we don't have the resources to, to do that. But we have to be mindful, you know, the warden is correct. We have to be very mindful of how far we go here. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to make sure that our partners know that too. I, for sure. It feels like our best chance, though, at getting some... Yeah. Real, real answers. Last kick at the can. That's it. That's it. So, any other comments? Any other discussion? So, I, I what like we're to make, I'd like to make a motion. We, yeah, we need a motion. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we uh, uh, we give uh, we fund the thirty-two thousand as being asked by our partners uh, to uh, fund. Uh, the airport on this and then on this and never. Okay. The, uh, the rain. rain. Sorry. Sorry. The rain. rain. That's because he is going to the rain. Provide the project in the rain. Is there a second there? Second. It's been moved and seconded. If I hear no discussion or call question. for the question. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Contraminded nay. Motion carried. Next one is Municipal Accountability and Transparency Committee recommendations. Well, there's 15 pages to that. And again, I think I'm going to, to, to turn that to our CAO. Maybe he can uh, explain a little more what's, I guess, you know, what it has to do with, but. <laughs> so this is the post Richmond reaction. How's, how's that? That's <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, that's Frank. But, yes. Anyway, so um, 
there's a summary of recommendations here. There's really not necessarily a decision to be made by this council today. Uh, it might be something you table for the future. You might wait for the AMA, UNSM, or Department of Municipal Affairs to come out with something. But essentially what they're saying is they're now going to be requiring municipalities to post expenses online. So we're, you know, you know we're, we're beginning to, to do that. So now it's going to be mandatory through the MGA. So yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's restricted to exactly. CAO and council. So yeah. there's... Nothing wrong with that. No. So, I mean, we were okay with that. So, uh, and so, it, you know, each expense has to be accompanied by a business purpose, et cetera. So they'll probably, what I anticipate is that there'll be templates and best practices created and that we will be receiving those and we'll be using them. Okay. So strengthen expense policies and practices. Um, you know, we already have an expense policy. They're, they'll create a best practice. We might steal things from them and ours might be better. It's hard to tell. So, you know, that's not going to be a big deal. I think that there's always room for improvement, and I imagine a, a good group of people will get together and do that. Uh, require a code of conduct, conduct and a complaint process. Um, they talk a lot about whistleblowing. They don't like to call it whistleblowing because it makes people sound like, you know, that they're ratting out their friends. And, but, they're, they're, it's, but, but on the flip side, there, there's a real problem with when the CAO is doing bad business because who is going to report that, you know? And anybody who, who might even have an inkling of that works for that person. So it's very difficult and challenging. So there should be some way to do this in a way that, that protects uh, the employees or whoever might be involved. So I imagine, again, the Department of Municipal Affairs will probably look to do something there, uh, which is the next point, clarify the role of DMA. And uh, the last piece is uh, you should uh, do performance management for the CAO. Council should conduct performance management. Um, and, and they are looking to add that as a governance indicator. Like, so are you doing it? Yes or no? Tick, tick box, good for you, or X, you didn't do it. So that, you know, council will now be forced, I guess, for all intents and purposes, if you want to look like, like good governance uh, to, to, to give the CEO a performance evaluation, probably at least annually. And the last one is, uh, is that they're probably going to mandate an additional uh, non-council member on your audit committee. So that usually would be somebody uh, with some business acumen or some accounting background. Uh, it can't be your auditors because they, they have to be independent of that group. So that's the, the highlights. I mean, you can choose to endorse them. You can choose to do nothing. At this point, that's the recommendations that have been distributed. So, so do we? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, on a, uh, I read, heard on the news with Lloyd Hines some of the stuff he was paying with his credit card. So, I guess my question here is: uh, when we go to a UNSM and you pay for a room, you know, I've paid with my credit card. I've also had the municipality mm -hmm. had paid for it before. Mm -hmm. So according to that, I love the slow and high there. He was paying with stuff with his credit card, but he had the receipts and everything. Yeah. So really, should it be the municipality that pays with a corporate card? Is that what I'm reading there? Uh, I think there are different ways of doing that. I mean, if, if you are spending your own money for business purposes and submit that for reimbursement, that's pretty clear cut. Um, what happens, some of the problems are when, you know, every, everybody has a credit card. So the more credit cards you have out there, the less control you have over the, over the transactions. There's actually nothing, like the difference between a credit card and, and through the regular pay, like accounts payable, is that accounts payable requires a pre-authority. The credit card does not. If you have a credit card, you're authorized. So Councillor Guy Sudet can, can, can post any transaction to that credit card and, and if it's personal, then or business, it, it, it doesn't matter, it will authorize. So, so then it's incumbent upon the accounting department or the honesty of you to say, look, I accidentally did something pers on personal on this uh, credit card. The reality is there's only one credit card that's issued to counselors and it's to the warden. And he uses it so rarely that there's dust that is collecting on it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so uncomfortable having yeah, that kind very of good. So, sure. so it really, and the only purpose really from our perspective would be to, to, to book hotels or to book, like because you have to book with a credit card. We can do that through the, through the municipality. 
uh, but sometimes it's from a convenience perspective yeah. you would do that. And so some, some policies actually say you cannot use your credit card unless it's for A, B, C. So then if, the, if you use the credit card for something other than those things, then you've breached your policy. So every policy is different, every practice is different. Uh, from an internal control perspective, the less credit cards that are out there, the better. That's, that's how we roll. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. But, Thank you. But is it better for us to book our own room, pay for it, and then submit? Is it, is it an easier way of keeping track and for, to make sure that it's no. legit? No. no. It's, it's it the matter. same. It's the same. Same thing. We, it's either we control it or we control the reimbursement to you. Right, same and from, thing. From my perspective, it's, it's not necessarily fair yeah. to force somebody to advance their own personal money on a business trip. Right. So, if, so we often do the bookings on our credit card and we manage okay. it internally. Mm -hmm. There is no, from our perspective, there's, there's not a big difference between those two. Right. The only thing is, is, is if we see that it's done by MasterCard and we see the receipt, that, there, that we want to make sure that it's our MasterCard, oh, as yes. opposed to okay. your MasterCard. If yes. you're, if, so we use MasterCard. Visas are uh, are often used, and so if you know, there are very few MasterCards mm -hmm. out there, so we don't typically mix mix that. Okay. So we don't need anything on this at this point. We just no. just wait for. Wait till see you yeah, down the see one. Yeah. Next item: cannabis legalization and municipal impact symposium. There's going to be, as we know, that, that uh, uh, legislation is going to come through, legalization of cannabis. It's, it's on its way. And I guess there is an impact. <laughs> it could, there could be a, an impact to, to, we'll have to deal with it as a municipality for sure. Now, there's a symposium being held on Friday, May 26th in Halifax. And I guess probably wouldn't hurt to have some representation there some you know to get to get some uh, uh, information uh, just a comment yes going through this to me it looks more like it should be a senior staff somebody from senior staff and okay. that's because they'll be the ones that will try to be dealing that with, we'll it, deal with deal it on a good basis yeah. and then they can brief us to what we have to know but we're talking okay. well over a year before it's even legalized and for sure in months before they sorted out. Well, that is something, like I said, it's, it's, it's just want to, you know, we want to bring it that, that it's going to happen. And to me, somebody should attend from, from the municipality, whether it's uh, yes. staff or council or whatever, somebody should. If uh, I yes. may, what makes you say you, you feel like staff should go, I, I just, I can't for the life of me think how this legislation would affect us on a municipal level. No planning makes total sense. Plan use. Yeah. Plan I just use planning. Yeah. Okay. I know for the when I was do when I went to the um, police advisor meeting, the the policing, <coughs> uh, it's going to be an issue for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing when you're talking about um, driving under the influence of alcohol. There are mm -hmm. ways of, of of checking for that, but the officer that was speaking to us said this is a whole new kettle of fish, right? And you're looking at right. managing that part of it too. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that will increase. I don't know. You know it, what I mean? There could be implications there, there could be there. An, there could be an indirect uh, additional officer requirements, <coughs> which would be cost to the municipality. <coughs> Um, the things, there are always nuisances with grow ops. The, there's a smell when the bloom comes in and we've had certain people with small medical marijuana, like licenses to grow for their own purposes that have had complaints uh, from their neighbors around the smell every once in a while. I don't know how often it blooms, but, but it's those kinds of things. Those are, you know, smell and other nuisances that we may have to address in our bylaws. So, I mean, I agree with, with the warden. I think that we can, we certainly can send a staff person. I, my own personal suggestion would be a community development officer if she's mm -hmm. able, and uh, she could present the information to yeah. council. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that answers my question. That, I absolutely. I couldn't think what, how it could affect it. Yeah. If it ends up being a, a, a growing facility, probably follows under a farming or whatnot, or different types of zoning and planning, it's, yeah, it makes sense. Staff. Yeah. So I guess we need a motion to that effect. I, I would I would I suggest would, that would, so yes. it's for clarity, yep. Yes. So moved. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded. And that for moving seconded to send 
a staff, a staff person. A staff you don't have to identify the person at this time. Yeah. So, unless there's uh, questions or comments, I'll call for the question. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Dr. Mayad Ney, carried. Next one is policy, policy and bylaw update. Again, that is there basically, it's, it's for in, information and just to show what, what we have, what has been done to them, the field or, or new ones that have come up. Yep. So it's basically there for your information, I guess. Chris has, Chris has a question. Chris has. Okay. You said it quite well. It's there for your information. Um, it's just to remind you the policies and bylaws that we do have um, and the ones that maybe you see are missing and that we should have. Um, it's not something we look at very often, um, but it is obviously important documents for the municipality because they, it's what governs programs and services, and some services. Um, if you do ever have any questions or comments around any policies or bylaws, uh, don't be afraid to ask. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is, is pretty well a summary of all of the policies and bylaws that we do have, their approved date, um, whether or not they're in draft or if they're outdated, and what we're intending to do um, with each of them. Is that it? Any, any questions? Or? Okay, thank you, Chris. We'll move on. Request for relief of taxes and interest. Only one request. And it was in the office June to have this corrected. So I guess we, we need a we need a motion yeah. to, to accept. I would I would recommend that. Yeah. I'll make the motion. Second and second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contraminded nay. Motion carried. And the added one, that's for me. Uh, if you remember was it two years ago, three years ago, they had their first, uh, um, it's a, it's a, I guess it's a, it's a gathering of, of uh, the Francophone from all, all across. I mean, they, they come from everywhere. They come from, from it's in Quebec. Uh, our warden at that time went. I'm on the committee now. And they, the uh, Sedine is looking to send again a member from each uh, uh, four municipalities, the French French municipalities. The Acadian Affairs, they, they applied to Acadian Affairs for, for funding for that. Mm -hmm. I was just told today that that has been approved for $1,000 per municipality. And that's to, cover, that's to cover your flight, your hotel and whatever. Now, if I remember correctly, and, I, and you can you can uh, uh, verify that that last time, I, did it cost the municipality anything? Did it cost more than a thousand? I don't think it did. No. It was because because what what's going to happen is, is uh, the money's been given to the Sedene. We will, if I go, I will be giving the, my my expenses here. But the municipality will bill recoup. And, and recoup from the from yeah. there. So I guess what we need now, this is happening in July, two days of conference in July, and uh, the committee has appointed me to go if the municipality will approve my attendance at that. So I guess what I'm looking for is for a motion to approve my attendance in Quebec on July 17th to 19th. Second. Moved and seconded. Any, any questions, any? Yes? I was, uh, when they sent it out on the, uh, for the, the letter, email, for the I, I had said no, that was not in favor. Because I thought we might be spending money there, but no, now that it's covered up. Yeah. To go for my, yeah. my. No, yeah. what, what the, uh, the letter was what the letter was just to say that the uh, uh, municipality would approve okay. if it was paid, yeah. right? Yeah. So, okay, no, I'm, I'm for question. So, question called for all in favor, signify by saying aye, aye, aye. aye. contraminded nay, motion carried. Thank you. The rest is correspondence right now, correspondence and for information. 
we have one from, where are we here? Oh, the building permit comparison. The Western Wren Rural Broadband Project Application. Fisheries, fish, no, yeah, Fishery Magazine article. You've all seen it, yeah. Did you see the article that, uh, that I left? Yeah, yeah. That was I, I've seen no. those, right up the other end. So which article was it going into? It's going in the, um, uh, the Fisheries Magazine that uh, Walter and Ecamp produces. Okay, yeah. I can't recall the name right, right offhand. Yeah. King Foster. Yeah, something oh, like that. King yeah. Okay. Something so that was your write up, your personal write up as the CEO of the, the municipality. He, yeah, he requested uh, uh, comments from yeah. from myself, and I yeah. passed it through the warden and deputy before. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I just mm -hmm. I I seen the write up, but I couldn't figure out which fishery Where magazine it was. It was yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Very nice write up. It portrays as well. Yes. Oh, who yeah. we are and what we are yes. down here. So yeah. What makes us operate. Yeah. What makes us miss meetings and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. That's, true. That's absolutely true. Yarmouth International Airport, uh, the annual report. And then we had a, a letter, I guess, uh, with the application from Wren. It looks like uh, uh, there was uh, support from our uh, MP, Colin Fraser, there was a letter sent for support. Is there anything, any one of those that you want questions on or discuss or? If not, financial requests, we don't have any. Anybody have any agenda topics or notice of motion? Uh, yes. I just have, uh a resident had approached me, and I completely forgot to add it to the agenda for this time, so I just wanted to mention it now. They had asked me if we had sent a formal letter of um, a, a thank you letter to the Mariner Center for all the, the help that they had given us during the, the flood, because a lot of our residents oh. went there and had, you know, got a lot of work <coughs> from them, and I had asked, and apparently we had not. So, um, I mean, I can make the motion Is now. Is that okay if I make the motion now? I can't see why not. Okay. That way it won't really want to talk about it. Yeah, it so won't I'd like to make a motion that we send a, a thank you letter to the Mariner Center from our council, from the residents of our, our uh, municipality for helping out during the flood. A second. The drought. The drought. <laughs> thank you. The drought. The drought. The drought. Not the flood. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I've been sitting here thinking, what? What, what, what <laughs> have we missed? <laughs> a second. You guys have been fishing Come a long on. time. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Oh, Thank you. Don't the water in my well. <laughs> seconded. Yeah, okay. It's been moved and seconded. Question. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Under my nay. Yeah, we'll get carried. It's one on your brain. I do. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. yes. rain coming the next few days. Yeah. So nobody else has anything for those motion or agenda? Question period. We don't have to. Oh, we have some, we right? Do. I keep forgetting. We, we, we can have, get them from online now. We have a Facebook Live question. Yes. The question is, when uh, cell service to Carlton Kempville is, when is it going to be available? Uh, we need cell service in our area. So um, uh, I imagine that could easily have come from Quinnan as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's still an issue. Um, I don't have, we don't have a, an, an answer, answer uh, for that question at this time because obviously we don't provide the service. I can say that we are investing a lot of time and energy in rural internet. And part of the plan uh, would be a significant improvement to the infrastructure in our area. Now, I can't say that, that the cell technology could somehow be improved in that process or not at this time. But, but the, the fact of the matter is we have a, a major funding request for rural internet and I wonder whether that could potentially open the opportunity for so. the Bells or the exactly. others of the, of the world exactly. to, to decide that maybe cell phone can be tagged onto it. So and I wish I had a good also, answer. Last, was it last year, the year before, that we sent a letter to CRTC, is that Yes, yeah. we did. Yes. Because there was, it was brought, I had brought it up as well because yeah. I had some concerns in Quinnin. Um, so we have sent a letter to them, but we didn't hear a whole lot from them. Um, and I do believe, didn't EMO also send, yes. you know, as, as a concern, as a okay. safety concern? Well, 
the, certainly the, the deliverers of the service have heard from mm -hmm. the municipality of Argyle yes. around these three communities. That mm -hmm. I can confirm. Yes. But their willingness to invest hasn't shown just no. yet. Right. And, um, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, the only thing I can say on that matter is we can, we can go again, and it's probably, I mean, I'm sure council would want us to do that, just to, to keep going. Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, the, the the rural what the rural internet has allowed is there's is is it allows for businesses to to make the business model work because there's provincial or federal funding coming in so that maybe we can push some of our government partners to try to find a solution uh, of that nature as well mm -hmm. so Certainly, our M our MLAs are aware of it as well. I'm sure Zach, Zach and Chris are aware of the situation. So I wish I had a better answer, but it's it hasn't been from the from the lack of trying on our end. But um, again, we're at the mercy of the supplier of the and service. And still trying. And still and trying. We, we, yeah. we just haven't forgotten about it. <coughs> it's it's just that. we're not. It's it not hasn't it hasn't produced. It's not an easy. It's not an easy task, you know, to convince these companies that they should do that. So. Yeah. So. I hope yes. that's not a great answer, but it's an answer. So an I answer. hope that's it's what we had at this point. Yeah. I'm just curious, are they ever government funded in some areas where, where it's deemed necessary? Uh, I think there's always... Uh, like are there co-op programs? or? Uh, I, I can't confirm that there is a set funding model no. for them. I think they usually take a look at the business model and mm -hmm. they make a business decision. Right. Um, so obviously... Uh, the cost to bring the service to that area is, in their opinion, higher than what they can recover. So, if we can somehow bridge that gap, um, then we, meaning government, uh, then then that might make them be more interested. And that's that's one of the avenues we haven't really gotten to the end of yet. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's great that we have. It's encouraging that we know there are people out there that are actually they're not sitting at here, but they, they have the opportunity to, to, oh. to watch it at home, and, and obviously some are. And it, I think it's very good that, that, that we have that service sure. and, and give the opportunity to I noticed one comment asked if I was making paper airplanes underneath the table, and no, I'm not making paper <laughs> If he is, he's not going You could have brought that question up, I'll ask. I didn't see that. I, I must yeah, have missed it. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, it's it's going 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 more food from our uh, Oh, that, that, yeah. Oh, okay. I understand. So, we have to go in camera. So, I guess we need a motion to, to go into camera. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye.